Hi, welcome back, everyone, to I'm No Genius. As always, I'm Eli, and uh, my co-host joining me uh, for the past several, several episodes is Camden Primer. Camden Primer, how you doing? Baby girl, how are you? How are you doing? Wow. I'm doing well. Okay, well, great. That's amazing. What's new Good. in the world of Mr. Prim Dog? Uh, well, I guess I never told you this, but I was interviewing for a job. Right? Really? Um, and I think I've told everyone else except you, Colin and Adam, because I saw everyone yesterday, but I got a job. Really? Yeah. Uh, with Pella Columbus, I'll be a window and door salesman come January. That's, that's a, that's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. So come give me. What was this job search like? What, what jobs were you searching for? And, uh, how did, uh, this company get stuck with you? Well, this one was kind of an accident. Of course it was. Um, yeah, where I was working with Westwood I, in the apartment complex, one of my boss's brothers works there, and he works at Pella. He was like, hey, I know you don't want to do this forever. We're actually hiring. Here's an email. Oh, interesting. I mean, I, I'll send it out there. I mean, any interview at this point can't hurt. So mm -hmm. I did the interview in June, uh, and then did another interview in July, and then another ride-along. Or like I rode along with a couple of the salesmen, and then this week, I uh, they offered me the position and I accepted. At a boy. So now I'm a salesman. You are a salesman. So how long? How long until until you start wearing three piece suits, start slicking your hair, and start watching the Wolf of Wall Street for a living? I'm thinking day two. Day two is about when I'll get there. Um, day two. You just got to really. I got You got to feel it out first. That's what day one's for. Right. Um, but yeah, no, I'm excited. I don't technically I don't start till January. So now I'm just kind of. I have one class. So I'm going to drive to school Tuesday, Thursday, take the class in the morning, work in the athletic training room in the evening. And then Monday, Wednesday, whatever dad needs down at the campground, I'll just do that. So a boy. Yeah, we are. We're we're living life over here, Bergie. How about you? I mean, yeah. What, you know, Cam, before we get to me, I want to keep focusing on you because this is a big milestone. Oh. I rem I remember when when I got my yeah. Yeah. first job, yeah, and uh, it was it was a pretty big deal. We had several episodes talking about my work life here yes. on I'm No Genius. We were shocked that yeah. any one of us had a real life job. Well, yeah, even though Adam's been working since he was eighteen, that doesn't count. How does it not count? He's an anomaly. Whatever he does isn't real. We never see what he does. He works in the shadows. He's a vampire. He does really work in the shadows, which, you know, coincidentally, a lot of mafia guys, like if you look at like Goodfellas and everything, they say like they don't want to talk about their work. So they just say, oh, yeah, I work in construction. Coincidence? Speaking of movie, no, not a coincidence. That's fact. Um, we, you can talk about you first, but we got to get to my the midlife crisis I had the other day. No, Cam, I, I think we should talk about your midlife crisis first. Let's stay uh, in Cam world. OK, you sure? I'm sure we're, I am trusting you here. We got to go. We got to dive deep. So this was what last Wednesday, Thursday. It was, yeah, it was about a week ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dad and I went to Skyline and he was like, this is before I had the job. So this is kind of good timing. Um, He was like, what job would you choose right now? Guaranteed a hundred thousand dollars. What would you want this job to be? And I was like, I mean, I would love to just retire in the middle of some private beach in Florida and just be the leather skin, disgusting old man, have just, my own have my own tiki bar. Just, just be just be Jimmy Buffett without the music. And just chat with tourists all day and serve them like weak, cheap drinks. That'd be awesome. Right? Yep. He was like, Oh, so like the movie Cocktail. I was like, I've actually, I've never seen, I know of it. Tom Cruise, never seen it. So I got home. It's the, tw it's the 21st century. I took my remote. I said, uh, Hey Google search cocktail. It's on YouTube TV. It's free. I got nothing to do the rest of the evening, rest of the afternoon. Might as well watch the movie. 88, I believe 1988. Yeah. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, wow. This is like a peak 80s movie, but like it's, uh, I'm encapsulated. I'm enjoying this. Yeah. Have you seen it? 
I have never seen it. Uh, okay. That's, that's actually one film that you have seen that I haven't seen. I know that's the first. This has never happened. I'm yeah. going to give you a quick breakdown. Please. Tom Cruise. Stud. Beautiful. He, it's been a week since I've seen it, so I got to remember. He lives in, uh, he just get, He just gets out of the army, right? Of course he did. Of yeah. course he got out of the army. It's Tom Cruise. Just got out of the army. Goes to New York. Meets his uh, uncle there who owns a tavern, like, or a bar, Pat's Tavern, something like that. He's like, Pat, I'm going to be a businessman. I'm going to, like, be a huge marketer or whatever. I'm going to work in the skyscrapers. And Pat's like, cool, buddy, with what degree? So he goes, Tom Cruise goes and does all these interviews. And they all reject him because he doesn't have a college degree. And he's like, but I can work hard, yada, yada. And he's reading all these, uh, like, get-rich-quick books. They're whatever. <laughs> so to make money on the side, he start he joins a joins a bar. He starts working at a bar as a bartender. He joins the bro, the bar brotherhood. He joins the bar brotherhood, and I forget the guy's name. Character, not even the actor. Character. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna look him up for you. Is his sidekick? Oh, this is terrible. This is terrible because this movie impressioned my life tremendously. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it more later. But you basically had an existential crisis because of this movie. It was the craziest thing in the world. I'll, I'll get to that. Doug? Anyway, is it Doug? Doug? Yes, Doug. And what's Tom Cruise's name? Just so Bri you're up to speed. Brian, Brian, Flanagan. Brian Flanagan. Brian Flanagan and Doug. Brian and Doug work at the bar. Doug teaches Brian everything he knows about bartending. They get good, really good together. They move to this high-end club So because a guy sees them. He's like, you guys are good. I want you. Takes them to his bar. They're doing great. Brian meets this rich like real estate lady and doug's like bro she's gonna sleep with the guy tomorrow night and brian's like no she loves me well the guy she ends up sleeping with is doug brian's pissed flies his ass to jamaica starts working on a tiki bar there this is this is my dream this is my he works at a bar he's wooing and wowing flipping mugs and whatnot whatever you do it as a bartender and he's good he's really good right there he meets elizabeth shoe are you familiar with elizabeth shoe i am familiar with her game Back to the Future 2 and Karate Kid? Yes. She's in this movie. And, and just so you know, she still got it later on. Even now. Oh. Okay. Still very beautiful. Right on. Okay. Anyway, Doug, I'm just going to call her Elizabeth Shue. Because I forget her name. Jordan. Doug, Doug and Jordan. Their name is Jordan. Yes, very good. You sure you haven't seen this? It's... Doug, Doug and Jordan. Um... They have a connection. They hit it off. They hang out when he's not working at the bar, but she's got to go back to school, but he don't want that. Doug shows up. Doug is now to Jamaica. He shows up to Jamaica. Okay, I was going to say, you said Doug yeah. and Jordan hit it off, but did you mean Brian and Jordan? Brian and Jordan, sorry. Cam, Pardon come me. on. Listen. Just, listen. From here, here on out, just refer to them in the actors' names, okay? No, no, Tom Cruise no, no, and Elizabeth Shue. No, 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 no. Brian and Jordan. <laughs> Power couple. Brian and Jordan. And, and Doug shows up. Hit it up. Doug shows up from New York, comes to Jamaica. He's got this younger wife who's loaded. Loaded. And uh, Brian's like, Doug, how did you pull this? And he's like, well, he's Australian. He's like, oh, well, that's not Australian. He's well, um, however way he pulled her, he did. Um, <laughs> so one night they're at the bar. Jordan's not there, but Doug's like, I bet you couldn't pull uh, an older, wealthy lady like I did. And Brian's like, dude, watch this. He goes over to some old broad and was like, hey, loser. At first, she's not feeling it. And Doug's like, told you you couldn't do it. Then she wants some. Mm. Brian ends up walking home with this older lady. Don't know her name. I don't think they said her name. They probably did. Jordan sees it in the rain. She's pissed. She's like, how could Brian do this? So she flies home back to New York. Uh, Brian's like, oh, shoot. Like, I, I let I let that go away. But now I got to go home with this wealthy lady because at least now I got money because he wanted to be a millionaire. Now he's a millionaire because he's with this lady. They go home. She's old, has all these buddy-buddy friends with these wealthy guys. It's just not Brian's speed. He gets to fight in an art museum, and she dumps his ass. He goes to the diner that Jordan's working at in New York City. He sees Jordan. Jordan doesn't want to see him, so she brings him the specials of the day and just dumps it on him. Real feisty one, right? Yeah. Um, and Brian's like, I'm not giving up on you that easy. 
follows her back to her apartment. There, Jordan's like, Brian, I'm pregnant with your baby. And Brian's like, no. <laughs> He's like, screw this, and goes finds Doug. Doug's at a boat in New York with his wealthy wife. And he's like, uh, he tells Doug the whole situation. Doug's like, look, bro, I have no dollars. I spent all of my money for my wealthy wife. I'm not happy and I'm broke. And Brian's like, well, that like, you can't do this. Like we're, we're, we're best friends. He's like, yeah, yeah. Doug gets hammered drunk. This might be a little out of, out of, out of order, but anyway, Maybe. Doug gets hammered drunk. Brian leaves to go find Jordan. He finds Jordan. Turns out she lives in a penthouse and her family is wealthy, wealthy. Top floor penthouse of the skyscraper. Jordan's like, all you wanted me for was the money. And Brian's like, I didn't know you had the money. I want to be there for the kid. I want to raise this kid. Right? It was awesome. But the dad's not. Jordan's dad's like, no, you're a scumbag. Get out of my house. Right. Okay, so Brian leaves. goes back to the boat to find Doug. Doug killed himself. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Doug stabbed himself with an expensive bottle of whiskey. Kills himself. So Brian's like, oh. I'm going to go find love. Goes back to Jordan. He's like, Jordan, I don't want, I didn't know you had the money. I don't want you for the money. I just want you. I want to raise this kid. You're the only person I've truly loved. Yada, yada, yada. So Jordan runs away with him. Flash forward. Uh, Brian has a bar called, um, bear with me. Cocktails and Dreams. That's what it's called. It's called Cocktails and Dreams because he and Doug were talking about starting their own bar, and that's what it's called. It's called Flanagan's Cocktails and Dreams. Okay. He gets on the bar and does a little slam poetry, Man of My Own Heart, and Jordan's like, um, I have one more thing that's going to surprise you. And he's like, what, babe? What could possibly surprise me at this point? We're about to have a beautiful child because I'm beautiful, you're beautiful, our kid is going to be gorgeous. Right. Genetic lottery right there. Twins. Movie ends. Cocktail. All right. Um, the reason for the viewers out there, the reason that Cam just ran through the entire plot of cocktail, this very well could be an incompetent critic episode, but we're not going to go that far. Uh, I just is, did it. It's because the other day, as Cam, again, Cam watched this movie and it really affected his life, did it not? I've never had a feeling like this. He's it was the wildest thing in the world. He, he again, yeah, never had a feeling like this in his life. And I'm just going to read the text that he sent me. He says, um, call off work, emergency podcast. Tom Cruise just changed my life. And I was obviously confused. So I said, elaborate. I just watched cocktail and it may have changed the direction of my life. And so what, so what do I do? What, what do I do in this situation? I obviously say video yourself making a cocktail and talk about the movie. Our first episode of taste buds, our unlaunched uh, food critic series that we have yeah. not gotten off the ground yet because we're lazy. So the video that I took is basically what I just did. Just me rambling on about trying to remember the plot points of this movie. Literally just watched it. Yeah. Uh, and I make an old fashioned and come to find out dad, he, dad, I put it in the fridge and dad drank the old fashioned later. He said it was good. You have a couple future. problems with the video. I was wearing an Ohio Christian shirt. Probably shouldn't handle alcohol while wearing that shirt. Can't do that. Like contractually. Yeah. Um, and the video was 10 minutes long and wouldn't send over iMessage. So we're still working out the ways to get it to Eli so we can throw it up there. But it'll come out, it'll come out with our uh, Diamond Anniversary, 10th Anniversary Special Edition podcast. Um, Like a like a vault thing. Yeah. It's on the I'm No Genius vault. But mm -hmm. the reason this movie changed my or almost did. I guess I guess we're kind of back to where we started, but the reason it almost changed my life was because I I didn't have the job yet. I was like Brian is a man after my own heart. <laughs> you keep forgetting his name. Brian is a man after my own heart. Young business guy wants to get out there and make an impact in the world, but he just 
He keeps trying and not nothing's happening. So he just falls back on his one job, falls in love with it, and he just makes something of it. He he, he makes a, he makes a living doing what he loves, and that's shaking drinks. Yeah. So, sitting there watching the movie, um, I was like, I don't have a job yet. I think I could be good at this. In the state of Ohio, there's not a lot of regulatory things when it comes to serving alcohol. Um, there's about a $400 mixology class I could swing out in six weeks. <laughs> I was about to tell, talk about that. I said, yeah, Cam, we'll stash that video for later. And Cam says, I said, do you feel better now that you got that out of your system? And Cam says, dude, I had to. I almost spent $400 on a mixology course. And I said, just now? And he said, about halfway through the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, what can I say? I was inspired. It was it was incredible, and that the mixology part that dream's not dead. I think I still might do it. I don't know when. I just gotta carve out the time to do so. But wouldn't that be a cool thing to have? Even if I never use it, I have the certification. I put it right above that. A well, certified no. a certified bartender, essentially. Yeah. Like what what special talents do you have? Well, I can make a mean martini, espresso martini. I mean. That's a cocktail, no? I don't know. Like you're asking the guy who doesn't drink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, my life almost went somewhere completely different. But now I have a stable job and I'm a happy man. That yeah, you you're like you're like the opposite of what happened to Brian in the movie. You're you're if Brian actually got his first job, just yeah. like move, movie over. Yes, you're hired. Roll credits. <laughs> but what could have been? I, I I guess so, but Cam, I, I mean, I'm just looking, again, I've never seen this movie. I'm just looking at it. Again, 1988, it's a romance comedy, even though... No, I giggled. You, I left. What, what you just took me through was a freaking fever dream. That's what it was. It was peak 80s. You didn't expect... Uh, shit, what the hell is his... Doug, you didn't expect <laughs> Doug to kill himself. Yeah, he drinks the whole bottle and stabs himself. What? I mean, it's like Roadhouse, where the guy rips out his throat. Yeah, he, guys like that in prison. What yep. are you talking about, bro? <laughs> well, Cam, it's not. I uh, yes, you're right. That is a very absurd part of the movie. But it's the fact that these people are just hopping between New York and Jamaica like they're next door neighbors. Yeah, I mean, the, the, about the the whole second act is in Jamaica. Act one and three are in New York. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, it's 1988, rated R, about an hour and 43 minutes, which honestly, I'm surprised you summed up an hour and 43 minute movie in like eight minutes. No, that was the entire movie. That was the entire movie. Yeah. Cam, I, I got it, you know, like like I do, because I'm, you know, a uh, bit of a snob with this stuff. I have to look at the critics on what they're saying about this. Who, who? The critics? No, listen, if you're a movie critic, and I don't know if there's any out listening out there. If you are, thanks for listening. But also, second off, get a life, dude. They're like, it's a movie. You're supposed to enjoy it. I get it's artistic, and you're supposed to pull the artistic yada, yada, yada from it. But really? You well, know? Cam, you know, let, let's. I'm just going to look at the scores really quick. This is what Google is advertising. 5.9 out of 10 on IMDb, which isn't great. It's Hall you of know, Fame. I mean, you bat 300 in the league. Hall of Fame. Bit of a different uh, different scale there. Uh, it's a 2.8 out of 5 on Letterboxd. What's Letterboxd? Letterboxd. It's like, you know, like those celebrities when they're at like red carpets, they just like, you know, what's your four favorite films or whatever? And they say like, oh, yeah, it's a Le Petit de la Dorition by it's an unknown uh, French filmmaker. And, you know, something yeah. like that. You know what I mean? Like it's they say like four films like that. And then like Oscar Isaac comes up and says, Oh yeah, Big Lebowski, hap, uh, you know, Happy Gilmore, you know, just like yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. actually good, actually good movies, actually good that, film. Yeah, that's Letterboxed right there uh, for snobs. Uh, and then <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes is the worst one of all. Uh, take a guess. Take a guess. Thirty six. No. What? Nine percent. Which means nine. Did they, see, did they see Tom Cruise in the movie? He looked great. I mean, yeah, 
I'm just looking. Yeah, I'm looking at the cover right Elizabeth here. The shoe was in there too. So was Doug. Doug was in the movie. He was Australian. I don't know if they watched it. Yeah, which I mean, you know, I'm looking at the cover right here. Tom Cruise, as you said, is looking pretty good. Yeah. And again, it says Tom Cruise in the top right corner, cocktail, and then the tagline: "When he pours, he reigns." Pretty clever. That's good. Yeah. That's no, that good, checks. That's a good tagline right there. <laughs> Cam, uh, I have you have you come back down to planet Earth after watching this film? Have I come back down? Yes. Yeah, no, we're I got a job now. We're grounded. I, you you have stay, cycle. So stay, on a like that. stable income. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, just basic American living right there. Actually, I mean, it, it's technically still not off the table because I don't start till January. If they find this podcast. Might be out of a job. Did they actually see how dumb I am? We might be done for. And then, and then, that's when I break open the fantasy football uh, money, and then I go off and get a six week course. <laughs> Half of Take a six week term. course. I'll do Half, three, yeah, three weeks. You do a three a three week course on mixology. Finish well, my degree. Well, Cam, as a guy who actually works. In media, and I'm actually on television. I get paid to be on television. My coworkers know about this podcast, and they just see how insignificant it is, and they don't care. All right, well, that's encouraging. That's very encouraging. We can just do okay. whatever we want. There's All no right. Purpose. Cool. We're, well, we're going to regulate ourselves still. We're just going to oh, proceed, uh, proceed sure. as normal. Yeah, yeah. Of but of course, of course. But Cam, you know, this whole... This whole cocktail whirlwind that you just took me through, it, it, it leads me to want to talk about myself. Shocker. Please do. Uh, I was on call this weekend for work, okay. which basically on call means you have to stay in town, basically. And if there's breaking news, they call you in. Gotcha. Now, there was no breaking news. So I was just hanging out all weekend. In awesome. Dayton. Have and you swam yet? Have you swam in the pool? I did. I did take a swim. I did take a really swim. nice. Yep. How was it? Uh, it was. It wasn't bad. You know, I, I was just you know a lone dude there, and there were like you know children and families around. So I left after about five minutes. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. Yeah, but quick dip in and out, and then uh, yeah. But here's here's what I did this past weekend while I was on call. I went to Guitar Center for three hours. Didn't buy anything. Went to the mall. Got Annie Ann's pretzels. Walked through Macy's once again. Didn't buy anything. I got a large pizza from Little Caesars for only seven dollars. Pizza, pizza. I watched Kingdom of Heaven for the first time, the Ridley Scott director's cut roadshow version. It was a hundred and ninety minutes long, and I think it was worth it. It was pretty good. Uh, passed out on my couch. Woke up in the morning, not knowing where or who I was. Checked for messages on my phone. Okay. There were none. Shocker. Um, did eight push-ups, then fell back asleep. Okay. Woke up again around 3 p.m. on Sunday. Then I wrote and scrapped five original songs by Eli Burgett. And then eventually I went to bed, and that was my weekend. Did you write all this down as you were doing it? No. like I just... that Again... Unlike you, remembering cocktail, I just remember what I did over the weekend. Okay. All right. That sounds awesome. That was sounds a great, like a, a win weekend. That was such a great weekend. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Yeah. No, that sounds really good. I'd like to dip my toes into uh, not only the pool in your compound, but also the little songs you're writing. Oh, well, what do you want to, what do you want to know? Have you attempted to write songs before? Yes. Several times. And? They all are terrible. Okay. Now, when you're writing a song, what do you start with first, song or music? <laughs> do you mean lyrics or music? Sure. Jeez, you call yourself a snob, but you don't even know. Uh, All right, uh, finer arts here. I don't worry about the, the the making of the music. I just go observe the, the orchestra and the symphonies, put it all together. Yeah, my In bad. In French, mind you, in the top balcony of a playroom. Yeah, these are these are English songs right here. So sorry, yeah, these are strictly English American songs. No French in even though I took three three years of French in high school. But how many how many years? Three years. Bah, you mean you idiot? 
you walked into that one. Yeah, I yeah, I did. But yes, I always start with uh the music. Typically I'm picking around on the guitar or maybe playing the piano and then I start with the music. How do you how do how do you musicians do that? How do they Think of how many songs have come out since the beginning of time. Uh, a lot, at least 12. How do they not reap at least 12? How do they not repeat? I mean, they have to draw. From, I mean, it's like Mr. McCorvey said. They have to draw inspiration from something small and make it unique and not about a stop sign. Um, or, an I mean, onion. or an onion. None of my songs were about a stop sign or an onion. So I've got that going for me. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I believe that I saw this when I was watching the, we are the world documentary on Netflix. Have you seen that? Yeah. Good one. The greatest night in pop. And it was pretty good documentary. I would say yeah. Michael Jackson, uh, Stevie wonder and Lionel Richie, when they were writing the song, they start with the music. They start with, you know, what kind of chords they want to play and everything. And then they start, you know, humming and just like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then they fill in the words later. They they like record themselves humming the entire song, like what what notes they want to hit when they're singing, and then the words just you know they fill those in later. And that's what I did with my songs. That makes sense. And were your songs all acoustic, or were you on GarageBand fiddling around? I you know I wasn't on GarageBand. I left the iPad back at the office, so you know didn't get a chance to be on the Garage Band. But, mm -hmm. you know, they were all acoustic. I was all picking around on the guitar. I, I actually, even though I scrapped the songs, I did save a couple of the titles because they were just too good to throw away. Wow, and, you made it all the way to title. Yeah, oh, I, dude, I had five. I'm not kidding. I had five finished songs. Why did you scrap? Because I listened to them the following morning. They were terrible. Yeah, but you have horrible taste. Send them to me. Were they fast or slow songs? They, it was a little bit of, I think I had, uh, let me double check. I had, I think there were two fast songs and three slow songs. Can you find them? What do you mean scrapped? Deleted I, entirely? Honestly, I think they're just in my recently deleted folder in my notes. Find them. I'm not going to give you the whole, I'm not going to sing you the whole song because no, I, wanna, I don't want to hear it now i don't listen as your financial guy i'm i want to make you as much money as possible and hide as much as i can from the irs if you can take these songs and we can build something from them, even just a five set album maybe a little ep we'll put it out and potentially make some money we're gonna do so hell I mean, listen if we burned a cd and put it on the i'm no genius shop one of our moms is buying it for christmas i promise you that we burned a CD. Wow, that takes me back. Same. That take, that's like that's like 2004, man. I, yeah. We were two years old listening yeah, to CDs. Burning CDs left and right. Yeah. I remember right the other day, like, I don't know why I just thought of this. When, I, when we were on vacation and uh, I was chilling with my niece, little Bailey, who's adorable, by the way. And uh, we were watching Imagination Movers. Do you remember that show? Yeah. And I remember we had a CD of the Imagination Movers soundtrack, and that thing was awesome. Yeah. No, I, I remember the entire set list to a Dell 21 CD. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, I, so you're saying that I should capitalize on some of these on-call weekends where I'm in a state of mind that isn't really all there to make yes. some good songs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, can I can I just at least run by the titles really quick, just so we're not making a mistake? I would love that, but I also want you to record the songs and send them to me on the low. If they're bad, they will never see the light of day. But let me be the judge. Sound good? Okay. All right. Um. Again, these. I'm not kidding. Like this isn't. A, I'm not doing a bit here. These were actually the, these were actually titles of the songs that I wrote. In the moment, you're like, this is this is. And in, this in the moment, good. I'm just like, oh, Stairway of Heaven, Purple Rain, Hotel yeah, yeah. California. Get the heck out of the way. New kid in town. Yeah. Eagles. But uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, the first one I wrote, this one I was, oh, I was so proud of. I was, you know, ready to record this one. It's called Back to the Drawing Board. What do you think Back to the Drawing Board's about? Uh, scrapping five newly written songs. 
Uh, no, but that would have been that would have been fitting, actually. Um, back to the drawing board. You just got broken up with. Yes. Aha. Yeah. Ju yeah. Just got broke. I'm a music guy. Y you are a music guy, but you might might notice a theme with some of these songs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this, uh, yeah, back to the drawing board. You know, you're, you're getting broken up with uh, more than once, I would say, because you know, oh, yes, back to the drawing board again. Slow or fast? That that one was fast. Oh, I like that. I like that. That should be a fast one. Yeah, it, it sounds like a fast. You haven't even heard the song yeah. yet. Yeah, no, it sounds like a fast one. Okay, uh, the second one. This one was a a, a slow one, and mm -hmm. it could be interpreted different ways. It's called "You Were My World." Hmm. Again, mm. a, a common theme here. Yeah, you're in a really bright, bright, bright place, huh? <laughs> yeah, which you know, I, I you can interpret it multiple ways, but it's really just about getting broken up with again. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, or or just straight up like your loved one dying. Like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's spin it. Positive spin on that. Yeah, good. I like it. Keep going. Uh, the 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 third one. This one's actually a happy one. This one is a is a love song. It's a fast love song. It's called Call You Mine, basically. And it's just listing all the things you, you like about the girl you're you're dating, married yeah, to, yeah. or uh, you know, or just significant other ladies. If you if you want to yeah. sing about your significant other too, uh, you know, I will charge you for the rights to the song. But uh, you know, moving on, moving on. Uh the the fourth one that I wrote, this one I actually wrote a long time ago. I wrote this one back in twenty 20 i believe this was like mid this was a covid song this was a co this was a vid song for sure i didn't realize you've been writing music for this long bergy well, why well, why have we not known well cam i'm an artist okay you can't rush art i don't yeah. want to give you guys something i don't want to i don't want to dangle keys in front of your face and then just say but you can't have it you can't have it sorry yeah i want to give you guys stuff that you can like you know 36 songs, Morgan Wallen. I'm not there yet, but I want to give you guys a lot. If you want me, you'll get all of me. Oh, please. <laughs> but yeah, this song I wrote back in 2020. And again, it's about it's about a breakup. I think I was listening to like a, a lot of Keith, Keith Whitley or something. Like So yeah, it, it's called That Guy's Not Me. Basically, you know, this guy gets the girl of his dreams and it, it ain't me. <laughs> yeah and then uh the this one this one's actually my most recent song and it's the one i'm most proud of it's called i can't write a song oh good oh uh, and i'm not kidding crazy. i'm not kidding it's probably my best one <laughs> slow slow song it's more it's it's like uh shoot i'm trying to figure out uh it's like um it's like a finger snap song and everything you know okay, just what's like what's the theme of this one what do you think the theme of it is? You suck at writing music. <laughs> it just it's like it's basically me saying I have like feelings, but I don't know how to write songs. Oh, that's I mean that's that's creative. That's creative. That's a small thing that's creative. I like it. I I guess so, man, but what what I'm trying to say here is I guess you know, we'll flash forward to the lesson at the end. Kids, don't write songs when you've oh. had only like Mountain Dew and Little Caesars pizza to fuel yourself for the next couple of hours. Yeah, God forbid we don't want a bunch of fifth graders writing music at a sleepover. <laughs> that is so true. I'm so I, I do have the diet of a fifth grader. I'm not gonna yeah. lie, but but yeah, that was that was my my whole weekend right there. That's incredible. Yeah, we're I, gonna have to we're gonna have to keep putting pen to paper and finger to string. I like this. <laughs> I'm I'm surprised that I I, I guess I, I should be glad I, I was just surprised that you you asked me about the songs more so than me sitting down to watch the director's cut roadshow version of Kingdom of Heaven. I what is that movie? I've never heard of that. It's a Ridley Scott movie, and it's basically like you know the Crusades and everything, the Christian Crusades. Yeah, we like we I don't think we learned about those a lot uh, back in school. Maybe like in seventh, seventh grade. grade. Seventh grade, we did. Yeah, seventh grade. Basically, it's like Gladiator, but set during the Crusades and everything. Gotcha. Like like a like a blacksmith playboy play, playboy Orlando Bloom. 
which that that was a terrible act. No, that was good. You sound like the Outback guy. I know, but Orlando Bloom's from England. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, that was pretty bad. It's, it's played played by Orlando Bloom, which like Mr. Orlando coming off Pirates of the Car- coming off Lord of the Rings, Pirates of the Caribbean, coming off Troy. This is peak Bloom right yeah. here. He, he, which I didn't intend that to be a pun, but yeah, that's peak Bloom. Peak Bloom. He's bloom. He, yeah, has bloomed. Is exactly. And the cast was stacked. We're talking about Orlando Bloom, Edward Norton, Jeremy Irons, Liam Neeson, uh, Eva Green. Um, shoot, I know there were more. There's there there were a bunch of like you know well known like you know Brian Flanagan, Doug. <laughs> which actually Norton. Brian Flanagan. There's like Irish people in the in the in the movie, and Brian no Flanagan. Brian Flanagan does sound like an Irish name. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, like stacked cast and. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you how I was led to watch the director's cut roadshow version. What does because that mean? What does roadshow version mean? Cam, I couldn't tell you. All right. Where did you find this movie? I've Cam, never heard of it. Cam, I've heard of Kingdom of Heaven. Okay, Kingdom of Heaven. It's it was a well known movie, but now it's kind of forgotten and everything. Because let's be honest, the the theatrical version is not that good. Okay. I get like I, I'm watching the the regular movie. The, the regular movie is available on Hulu, and I'm watching the movie on Hulu. I get seven minutes into the movie, and with well, actually, I get like two minutes into the movie, and within the first thirty seconds, Liam Neeson comes trotting in on his horse, and he comes up to Orlando Bloom, who's a blacksmith, and he says, "I seek your forgiveness. I'm your father." And I was like, well, "What's the? Where's the build up? What are we? What? What is this? What? What?" And so I keep watching it, and then about five minutes later, Orlando Bloom basically kills the town priest and goes on the run. And like, what? there's no, there's no setup. And I'm just like, I feel like I'm watching like a bunch of different movies here. What's going on? And so I look it up because me, I don't accept failure. All right, mm-hmm. I look it up. I was like, Ridley Scott, he wouldn't do this. He wouldn't do this. I know Ridley. He's a great friend, not a great man, but he's a great friend. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know what I'm saying, but Ridley Scott apparently had to chop down the movie like by like 45 minutes because it, it was just too long. Mm. And, and so I looked up, is there a director's cut of Kingdom of Heaven? And they said, yes, there is a director's cut. And many say it's one of the greatest films of all time. And I was like, well, now I have to watch it. So... I go on Amazon, which is the Did only. You buy this movie? I didn't buy it. I rented it. Oh, God. I it, go it... on. Yeah, I I didn't buy it. Let's not get crazy. Yeah. But I I looked it up on Amazon. I was like, okay, it says director's cut, and then even further, it says Ridley Scott director's cut roadshow version. And I was like, okay, you lost me at roadshow. I don't know what that is. Yeah. I I can only assume they like made this on the road or something. <laughs> And I start watching the the director's cut, the Ridley Scott. This is his vision right here. Yes. It starts out with like a seven minute black screen orchestral like arrangement. <laughs> and I was like, like this was before the credits, the opening, like, you know, the the logos, the movie, the movie yeah. studios even like opened. It's just a black screen doing this. I and I was like, they, they cut it and, I, and I was like, yeah. This is it. Yeah, this is this is the one right here. And I start watching the movie and I'm not going to lie. Once it got going, it was pretty good. Like really? like about it like Edward Norton, you don't see Edward Norton's face like at all because he plays like a leper and he's got like that iron mask and everything, you know, like yeah, I, I mean, on, I'm looking you, it up cuz I'm intrigued to what he looks like. Yeah, you, you you've probably seen it before if you know if you, you if you see it again, you'll know you've seen it once or something. No, that was good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, halfway through the movie, um, the spoiler alert, but it's also kind of a historical film. So. What's the movie called? Stairway King- to Heaven. Kingdom of Heaven. Okay, go ahead. Damn, goodness gracious. Anyways, Edward Norton, his character, he plays King Baldwin. He dies halfway through the movie, which in the theatrical cut, apparently he dies like, like with like I think like thirty minutes left in the movie. Totally kills the pacing. Wow. Totally kills the pacing. And 
so I start watching, and Edward Norton dies halfway through, and got some you know great scenes, good characters, great acting. Everyone's you know giving it a hundred percent. And then at the very end, they have like this like forty five minute battle sequence where the the uh, Muslim people they're trying to you're trying to take back Jerusalem from mm -hmm. from the Christians, and eventually the Christians just keep like holding them off and everything. But the Christians aren't doing very well either. I mean, we know how history plays out. They yeah, went back. Yeah, yeah. They went back and forth for forever. Anyways, Orlando Bloom and the uh, S Saladin, I believe, is his name. Uh, yeah. yeah, Doug. Doug. <laughs> Sorry. They have a meeting. At, this is like five minutes left in the movie, and they say, like the the uh, leader of the Muslims. He goes, "What what will it take for you to surrender?" And he basically says, I'm going to burn every stone in Jerusalem to the ground as long as it keeps my people safe. And he says, OK, if you surrender the city to us, we'll let all of your people go. You'll have safe passage to the ocean, basically. And Orlando Bloom, this was like after he gives like this big speech saying Jerusalem, it's not it's not about protecting the actual city. It's about protecting the people, the Christians within this city, which yeah. I can, which I can get behind. That's a very yeah. good. It's a very good speech right there. Anyways, he, uh, Orlando Bloom accepts. They surrender Jerusalem. The Muslims take over. And the Christians, they flee to the ocean. Only at the end of the movie for the king of England to show up and say, hey, we're looking for this guy. He held off all these Muslims from invading Jerusalem for like, you know, weeks upon weeks in this battle. Do you know where he is? Orlando Bloom says, huh, never heard of the guy. And, wow. he said, and he said, and he, and the king keeps on walking. He says, we're going to take back Jerusalem once again. So it's a cycle. It's an endless cycle, this war that was happening. Again, I'm not well versed on the Crusades. I probably should be being a Christian, but that's, that's a really cool way to leave off. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's like, uh, 19 cent. No. Right to bear. No, it's a moment. What are you, what are you saying? World War One movie. Nineteen set nineteen front. That's what oh. I'm thinking. Oh, it's yeah. like that movie. How the whole build up goes on, and then at the very end, at least in the book, I've never seen the movie. Very end of the book, he just dies, and that just shows the insignificance of one soldier in a war. Yeah, kind of the same thing. It's kind of crazy, man. Yeah, it's awesome. Sounds good. It, it Sounds was. Good. It was pretty good. Did it need to be a oh, hundred? Sounds good though. Yeah, did it seem to be 190 minutes? Did did it need to be 190 minutes? I I don't think so, but it was good. I'll have to keep that in mind. Thank you, friend. Yeah, so uh, viewers, we hope that you've enjoyed our mini incompetent critic episodes summarizing Cocktail and Kingdom of Heaven in this non incompetent critic episode. Yeah. Hey, you know what? We're uh men of the people, and the people should see these films. I suppose so, for sure. Cam, there's also another thing that I wanted to bring up. A bit, of, it's a piece of news that I was informed on yesterday, not by anybody in the newsroom, not by a news outlet, not by a reputable source. This was from the Lights Camera Barstool Instagram page, which is the movie account for mm -hmm. Barstool Sports. They post that Chick Fil A is making a streaming service. For real? I will open up for questions. Uh, yeah, I'm going to hop on the old interwebs here. What does that even entail? Cam, I, you know, I wish I could tell you, really. But I don't know. Because... Like why, why would they... What is it just a bunch of Christian shows? What it, Are they making chicken? Is it the slaughters? That'd I, be kind of messed up. Oh, Chick-fil-A streaming service. Second search thingy. Yeah. Hatches plan for streaming service as reality TV... Comes home to roost. Chicken puns. And I have to watch an ad that I'm not going to watch. So, you know what we're going to do? Fun little game we like to play here. I'm no genius. We're going to make it up. Yes. Uh, what do you think is going to be on the streaming service? I was talking about this with my coworkers, actually. Okay. And I, I anticipate that it's going to be like, like Hallmark little bit like you know like these like you know or the netflix like you know b movies starring like you know uh, vanessa hudgens or yeah. some of some of the cast from riverdale or something yeah, yeah. just you know like uh, oh a prince for christmas or you know stuff like that or uh the christmas switch or 
the Christmas setup or the Christmas. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of Christmas movies. They're going to make Christmas. they're going to make their bank off their Christmas movies. And, you know, it's just a lot of feel good stuff that will have ultimately no impact on society as a whole. It's, uh, it's um, positive brain rot. There's a positive attitude to the mindless, numbing film you're watching. I guess so. I mean, that's that might be a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah, this is intriguing. I'm not going to buy it. I'll I probably buy food, the food, not the service. Yeah, I I ate at Chick Fil A today, and and being a journalist, I can't believe I didn't, you know, like you know, point my finger at the workers and say, hey, yeah, what's what up a, with this streaming service? You were boots on the ground. I was. I was on ground zero. I was. I was in Springfield, Ohio. Actually, I don't know. That's not their. That's not their headquarters. You know, that's where that's where the first chicken was hatched. You might be right. I don't. I don't know. I, yeah, no, I'd, have I to, I'd have to check on that. But uh, yeah, I I didn't think to ask them about this because I'm not really sure what they're going to call it either. Hmm. So now again, we're continuing this game of just making it up as we go along. Names for the Chick Fil A streaming service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's use our brains here. Um. Here, Epiphany. Hatch. That's good. Thank you. It's 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 solemn. It's not the word I was looking for. It's singular. Yes. It's it's basic. It's one syllable. One syllable. Hatch. Chicken related. Yes. I like that. They could be it. Um because they can't go with Chick-fil-A plus or Chick-fil-A now. That doesn't make any sense. It has to be it has to stand on its own. Basically. Chick-fil-A saucy films. Probably couldn't no, probably couldn't do that. Or just maybe the sauce. Nah, but yeah, but they're not no I mean they are known for their sauce, but like there's all kinds of sauce. Think of the world of sauce. It's a lot of sauce. There's a lot of sauces. Oh, wait, are we including like just any like condiments? The world of sauce. That? Just think of sauce world, Chick-fil-A. I mean, you don't when you think sauce, Chick-fil-A isn't the first one up there. You know what I mean? I think of Canes. Exactly. Yeah. Different chicken. They're not starting their own streaming service. No, no, no. Canes has the business model right, though. They will never change because it's simple and people know what they want when they go there. Yeah, it's like In-N-Out, but good food. You ever had In-N-Out? Have we done this before? In-N-Out is trash. In-N-Out is very mediocre. Mediocre. I think, I think, at best. I think, you know, the, the Western United States, ers they, they just don't like, taste buds. yeah, they just, well, they just like in and out because we don't have it. And they're just like, yeah. oh, it's, yeah. it's exclusive to, to us and everything. And I was just like, okay, keep it. Kind of like how I love Skyline. Yeah. Or kind of like how Ohioans, we have, Don we have Donato's. Dude, Donato's is so good. Not a thin crust pizza. That's the only thin crust pizza I'll eat. I eat Donato's pizza. Like when we get Donato's pizza, I don't treat it as pizza. It's just the chips before Mexican meal. You know what I mean? Like the chips and salsa where you just keep eating and eating until your food gets out. That's Donato's so true. pizza, I, I take one bite, maybe two, swallow. Yeah. No matter the size. Cam, that's actually a, what you just described there. Little chips and salsa. It's like an appetizer. Yeah, That's, that is a perfect analogy to describe Donato's you. pizza because it's sliced so thin and the slices are so tiny that you can't just like, you know, just pop one in your mouth. Really yeah. Quick. Like, oh, what's what, how many pizzas have you had? Oh, you know, 47. Yeah. I mean, everyone assumes like uh, here, I'm just going to grab my book for visual aid. This is like this is like the size. If this were triangular, this would be the size of like a regular like pizza yeah. and everything with Donato's. I just bumped my camera. Gosh darn it. Donato's is probably this size. Donato, this yeah. Mini yeah. post to note. Yeah, like like even this better, is, a card, your buck ID. My buck ID. Go closer to the camera I, so I can see the number. I still I think it's deactivated, but uh -oh. which by the way, my Zoom account with uh Ohio State, that one was deactivated as well. We can't moosh off Ohio oh. State to uh to have more than forty minute long Zoom meetings anymore. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, do you have to pay for this? Shut up. Are you serious? Yeah. How much? I think it's like 10 bucks a month. Bergy. What? Why are you why are you footing this yourself? Because I, I front most other things myself. <laughs> why don't you we're a team? Let me know. 
I mean, if you guys want to chip in, I'm not going to stop you. Well, we don't know about it, so let us know. Uh, yeah, well, I, yeah, I pay 10 bucks a month, and like for what it's worth, the reason that I'm okay chipping in all of it is because I'm on all the episodes. I don't want to charge Adam and Colin, you know, two bucks a month if they're not going to be on an episode for an entire month. Well, wait till January and I'll start paying you. Wait. <laughs> wait till yeah, I'll make it. I'll make it uh, four more months. It's it's no yeah. big deal. All right, yeah. sounds good. But yeah, Chick Fil Chick Fil A streaming service, which you know, Hatch. I like that. Hatch. It's a good one. Good. Um, crispy or crisp, maybe crisp plus. Crisp would be good. Um, yeah, you're good at this. I, I've I've got nothing. Just think like chicken. Just describe like adjectives. Oh, I see. I just think keep saying sauce. Yes. Um, just word association. Three, um, two, one. Chicken. Saw uh, egg. No, see, like I want to say something with eggs or shells. <laughs> um, all right, word associated for you. Three, two, one. Banana. Space. <laughs> Banana space. <laughs> yeah. So, like that. Right. Okay, go ahead. I want to do it again. You want to do it? <laughs> All right. Um, three, two, one. Bun. Burger. That was good. There you go. Yeah, we're we're getting somewhere again. Chick Fil A doesn't serve burgers, yeah, yeah, but but like when you said bun, burger. I'm yes. Need more. Ready? Ready? Okay. Three, two, one. Green. Bean. Bean, green bean good yeah this is good which probably my my vegetable that i like the the most i guess you've eaten those yeah I'm proud of you thank you it it's was good. it's been it's been a while for sure many years but i've had them years since your last green bean what are you in rehab i don't want to fall that. off the wagon yeah i'm close to 500 days i get a special pin <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, you want to keep doing word association, or should we keep? Should we nail down this Chick Fil A streaming title? Forget Chick Fil A. Word association is fun. <laughs> okay, this, uh, isn't, this isn't a rip off of the base of yard. We saw it on the base of yard, but it's just a fun game to play. It is a it is a very fun game. That's for, we we've ripped off the base of yard so many times. Who haven't we ripped off? Um, call her daddy. Not yet. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Not yet. Uh, okay, three, two. One sales done. What'd you no, say? No, the sun, I think. Sun, no. <laughs> sales, sun, That's sales, sun. Yeah, man. All right. Okay, three, two, one, lamp, Michael. Okay, Michael, lamp. Good. I, I don't know why, but I think, I think I might need to close my eyes because the way. You were like holding your hand. I remember again, Cam. This is just how my brain works. What the way the way that you had your like hand positioned? I remember back in like elementary school when you dressed up as Michael Jackson, and I was just like, why can't why can't I stop thinking of Michael Jackson? You said lamp. It didn't matter what came out of your mouth right there. I was gonna say Michael. Interesting. Okay. This that's is not just very good word association. That's. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna close my eyes next time. All right. right. Close, last round. Last round. Okay. Three, two. One news cycle. Ah, oh, there it's you go. It is a constant good. cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Ready? You do me. All right. I think it worked. I almost did banana again. Three, two, one. Crayon jelly. Hungry boy? Huh? I I like jelly. <laughs> I was thinking cra crayon. I, I was thinking crayon. Okay, purple crayon. Purple jelly. Okay. Again. Wow, all that that fast, huh? I'm I'm two steps ahead, man. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anything you want to get off your chest before we wrap this up, man? Any any deep dark secrets you want to tell me? Anything uh hmm. you know, now that you have a uh J O B, are you gonna put an R I N G on the F I N G E R of your G F? How about you don't worry about me? Champ. I'm just surprised uh, I spelled all that. Honestly, that was, that was, that was good. That was that impressive. That it was actually fluent. It flowed. <laughs> um, deep dark secrets. Um, no, nothing too deep, nothing too dark. Really, it's no secret. Is it because I know everything about you? Yeah, I mean, everything that happens in my life, I immediately go to the group chat. So, 
That's so true. Yeah. Which, by the way, speaking of group chat, uh, Brew Dog, how was the performance this week? I had to tone it back because Chris and Carrie were there, and my mom and dad were there. We all rode together. They're like, I'm not waiting for you to order a fourth plate. So I just had a casual 25. But it was fine. The casual 25. Which I think I have to retire though because I today was a constant state of bubble gut. <laughs> yeah. I just can't. I can't keep doing this every week. I'm going to die. Yeah. So it, it's pro- it's probably a good thing everyone is going back to school. So unless Devin's free, maybe Devin and I can make that. <laughs> yeah, Devin might be free. Yeah. Yeah. Which which by the way, Kim, you bring up a good point. Uh, before we close, we got to talk about school getting back in session for you. Basically done at this point. You got a job lined up. Class class only one. Me I just got past the class. Yeah, just got to pass the. Well, I mean, not even. Really, are they going to ask for your degree when you start? Uh, no, but I probably should have a college transcript. Probably, you know, just so you can hang it on your wall. Exactly. Yeah, but uh, you know, you got one class left. I've been, I've been done with, cl- I've been done with that whole college thing for a while now, making big boy money. Yeah, yeah, uh, whatever. Enough to sustain myself, at least. Um, <laughs> you know, how's it feeling for this to be the last go around? No more school after this, unless you go back and like an idiot and get a master's. Yeah, no, screw that. It's sad, bro. Yeah. Not really. But it kind of is. But at the, at, once you're in college, you are ready to be done. Yeah. 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 No, like I got, I don't, I'm indifferent, I think. I got a new driver. This has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I got a new golf driver going to the range tomorrow. So that's exciting. I look forward to that. I think in this episode, we've really given the viewers a glimpse at how our brains work. It's just or like, they, or it, do they work? Yeah, even at all. It's like it's like ping pong balls bouncing, like like in a like in an empty room. But the ping yeah. pong balls like like there's no like air resistance, so it's just like bing 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 like all over. Like it's like a constant lottery ball machine. Yeah, that's actually that's a, that's an even better analogy. Thank are we you. like are we like two halves of the same brain today? Yeah, should we kiss? We're on Zoom, buddy. Oh, all right. Maybe next time. I love how that's the thing I pointed out. That's what's stopping us right now. <laughs> <laughs> but spe- speaking of your family, how's the family doing? Uh, good. Mom and dad are downstairs watching Your Honor. You watch that show? Is it uh, Mr. Heisenberg, Brian Cranston? See, yes, Brian Cranston. Have you seen it? I haven't seen it. Is it pretty good? Oh, I think you would really like it. Really? What's it about? Yes. Um, don't don't give me a summary give me a synopsis i don't want another cocktail incident so doug and brian no no just kidding doug um, faked his death yeah and he becomes a judicial basically the the short synopsis of the show is brian cranston is a judge his son uh runs over a kid in a car and like flees the scene he goes to turn him in and realizes that the kid his son ran over was the son of the mob leader of the city Ooh. So he's trying to like cover it up. Because you know what happens when you cross the mob? You are dead. Dead. Do you think we had a mob from where we're from? Yeah, the Mavs. Okay. Well, you know, that was a that was a positive mob. We actually helped people. But we yeah. helped we helped ourselves quite a bit. We helped ourselves quite a bit. Uh but seriously, do you think there was like a mob in the midst of those cornfields where we grew up? Like hiding out somewhere? No shot. I don't know, man. Because I'd be because some drug deals, but like mob. <laughs> no, I don't know. Because like I was thinking the same thing too. I was like, no, our place it's it's too hick. This isn't a mob scene. And then I watched Ozark, which basically Ozark is like it's like midwestern like yeah, mob stuff. Cartel. Cartel's different. Maybe there was like cartel stuff going on in you know in Asheville, Ohio. Yeah, I believe that. I actually believe that. Well, like cartel mafia, it's all this. It's all the same thing, no. because, because cartel Spanish no. for mob. Mob is Italian. Cartel is Latinx, Latinx. Okay, at least in my head. Right, but like, what's the differences between them? Is it just like name only? Um, country of origin. Country origin. I don't know. I'm I'm not in the mob. Or yeah. well, I mean, you are Italian. Like, or I could be in the cartel because I could pass as Mexican. You could very well. Yeah, you're uh, you're what the Hollywood casting directors call ethnically ambiguous. 
oh. which which means you could play, you know, uh, Luis, the the tire uh, shop owner, uh-huh. or you could be, you know, Alfonso, the Italian mob boss. Okay. Or you could play like King Tut or something. Oh, I could. Maybe yeah, you, I will. You could be Egyptian, honestly. Listen, how about this? I'll put out an audition tape. You put out those songs. Deal? Are we just, is this it? Are we, are we going for our dreams right here? Are we going to go big time? I mean, yeah. I think we're going to make it big time. It only took us 92 episodes to actually do something with our lives. About damn time. I guess so. Hey, man, congrats. Thank you very much. You know, congratulations on your future uh, acting career. Or would it be like modeling? What do you want to go into? A little bit of everything. I got 10 toes. I'm going to put them in everything. You know, be a Swiss Army knife. Well, you know, good luck to you with whatever your, your ventures hold, whether it be acting, whether it be modeling, whether it be uh, window and door sales. Thanks, bro. Let me get a ticket to your first concert. I mean, yeah. I mean, I would hope so. Well, you're going to be my financial manager, so you can just, you know, okay. buy one yourself. Always and forever, baby. Yeah. All right. A life lesson for the kids. Um, Follow your dreams. Like that Mac Miller song? The Spins? No. One? I'm not familiar. Uh, that's how he starts the song. Follow your dreams? He goes, dope shit. Follow your dreams? That's how he starts it. Oh, interesting. I'll Good have, to, I'll have to give I'll have to give that yeah, a little bit. Yeah, we're leaving it at that. Follow your dreams. Yeah. And, I mean well actually I take that back. Maybe don't follow your dreams. Maybe pump the brakes a little bit. If you see a movie that arouses some type of emotion in you, maybe give it a week. Yeah. But after that week, then follow your dreams. I think so. Yeah. Uh kids out there, whether I always start out this way. Whether or not, you know, whether you are thinking about pursuing a mixology career or whether you are thinking about pursuing a songwriting career after having too much little Caesars pizza and Mountain Dew, like an, like the casual 11 year old in America, um, or whether, you know, you're thinking about leading a defense of Jerusalem against the, you know, Muslims in the third crusade mm-hmm. and then denying the King of England when he shows up on your doorstep saying, Hey, you want to fight one more time? And he says, no, thanks. I'm good. I want to have a life or whether or not you're trying to start a Chick-fil-A streaming service. Follow your dreams, follow your dreams. I'm just going to echo what Cam said. That was just a long winded way of saying, follow your dreams to a certain, to a certain extent. Yes. Yeah. And with that, from everyone here at I know genius, a couple of guys who are following their dreams right now. He's been Cam. I've been Eli. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Everybody loves my baby, but my baby